It has been a busy last few days in Garmin land with new software releases in beta for a whole slate of watches. First, a few days ago, we had the Garmin Forerunner 955 update, getting a bunch of the Phoenix 7 and Epix Pro Series watches, then the 255, and then we had the Instinct 2 get training readiness, and now we've got the Garmin Phoenix 7 non-pro and Epix non-pro editions getting a bunch of new features, as well as the pro editions getting yet more new features that were not there at launch. So I'm gonna run through all of those new features right now. It's as simple as that. Note that this is a beta update as part of the public beta program. As such, if you do install this on your watch, your watch could do bad things. It could like kill your goldfish or something like that. So do not install it before you go out and do your big like Ironman race or something like that. Installing it is easy. You need to enroll your device in Garmin Connect on the website. Once that's done, you can go into the menus, down to settings, and then check for updates. And it'll go ahead and download those updates via Wi-Fi. From there, the installation takes just a minute or two and you're off and running. So the very first First big feature on this is the addition of Endurance Score and Hill Score, which is, I guess two features. Uh, so Hill Score is, as the name implies, it's a score for going up hills. But in particular, going up hills while you're hiking or running or any sort of pedestrian activity, it is not for cycling. So if you're a cyclist, sorry, uh, no luck on this one. Uh, and the goal here is to give you two different scores or one big score with two different components. The first component, Hill Endurance, talks about how long you go up a hill, how much endurance you have. Not really about speed, more about like how far can you go? Uh, the second one, hill strength, is really about how fast you can go up that hill. Uh, and so these two components add together and they show up right there. The second piece is endurance score. Endurance score is designed to be a better way than uh, measuring things against VO2 max or against necessarily like the training status portions, which in the Garmin land tend to be very heavily tied towards running and cycling. The endurance score is across all sports, anything with a heart rate. So it works for ice skating or swimming or whatever the heck you want it to be. Now, in my testing on both these scores, I think broadly they're pretty good, but there's just a lot of little detail things that don't add up, especially in my case on the endurance score where I could do a really, really hard workout and have it not move the endurance score at all, but then do like a really easy 30 minute workout and it spikes the endurance score. And again, those small things make me concerned about the bigger picture item of it. However, if this is your first device that has those features on it, it will take some time to get that data into there. Next, there's a new weather overlays. These are accessible via the weather widget, so they're not shown in sport and workout modes, but scroll a bunch down through the widgets, find the weather widget, go from there down to the very bottom again, and you can see these weather overlays. Uh, so you can see heat and precipitation and cloud coverage and winds. Uh, you can press the little play button and just get this little animation. Now, as I said, these overlays don't show up during your workouts and the navigation there on that map page. However, you can use another new feature called the Recents menu to go ahead and quickly access the weather widgets. So if you long hold the right hand button down, you get this like little recent pop-up overlay, and that's showing you in order the most recently accessed widgets. And so you can quickly jump back to the weather widget and you know scroll through it again, and then go ahead and find that particular overlay there. The next new feature also has to do with mapping, which is the addition of shaded relief maps. Uh, so you'll now see this like in mountainous areas or anywhere the, the train is spiky or pokey, or uh, it could hurt, I guess you could say. Uh, in that case, you'll see the shading on the maps. This makes it a little bit easier to see. And then continuing that trend of mapping stuffs, there is a new map data pages. These are customizable data pages, both a perimeter data page as well as an overlay page. And you can customize the data fields on the map. So this is handy if you'd like to stay on the map page a lot, but just want to have other data shown on there. Uh, I loved it during my pro testing there. And so it's cool to see here on these units as well. Also, other things I would love is if you went ahead and whack that like button down there. If you want to help with the channel quite a bit, just hit the like button. It does its deal, my bobber. Next, there's the addition of 30 plus new sport profiles. A boatload of sport profiles. You can see them on the screen right there. As I've explained in the other couple of recent videos, Garmin is roughly changing their strategy a little bit here. In the past, Garmin made sport profiles uh, that had very specific data behind it. So in mountain biking, you had grit and flow. And if you went downhill skiing, it would automatically track the runs. And the same was true if you went water skiing, it would track all that stuff automatically. That was different than most of their competitors, which simply just categorized different sports, but didn't give you unique metrics for that sport. And then Garmin says over time, they're going to see which sport profiles people are using the most and add more data and analytics and metrics behind those sport profiles uh, and kind of build out from there. Next, we got one more feature before we get into a bunch of new features that are new for everyone, including the existing Epix and Phoenix 7 Pro users. Uh, so this last feature is just for the Epix side, uh, which is Redshift. And this is something that has this red overlay over the screen. Uh, this is not on the Phoenix side because the Phoenix screen can't do that. So this might harken back to some of the tactics watches from a number of years ago that had that red overlay. Uh, the same thing here as well. Note that you can configure it on a sleep profile basis. So you can have it so that at night uh, in sleep mode, it goes to redshift. 
and then in the daytime, it's it's normal shift, not shift. Um, in any case, that is there for FX users. Now we got four new features that are across the board for both pro and non-pro users. Uh, the very first one is a new backup and restore functionality. Uh, so this is something that almost launched with the pro series, but got pulled out at the last second, but you probably saw in a few reviews out there. Uh, and this allows you to create a backup of your watch and restore it to a different watch or the same watch if you want to. This is super useful uh, before a beta, for example, where you may want to back up all your settings and all the stuff there, and you can restore it later on if you have to. Also great if something breaks in your watch and you got to send it in, you got the new one, and you can just restore all your settings exactly as is. Um, and even better, if you want to switch from one watch to another watch, uh, you can restore all those from one to another. So I actually restored in the beta process from a Phoenix 7 to an Epix uh, Pro and vice versa, back and forth, and no problems there. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if there's been any tweaks in this now with this new kind of final release but this is super cool to see and I hope you see it expand to other Garmin watches. The next new feature across the board is the new Workouts app. This is something we saw launch on the 955 a few days ago and what it does is it consolidate all of your structure workout stuff into one particular app. So you can open up this app in the sport modes and then you can see all of your structure workouts. Those are workouts that you created manually on Garmin Connect, workouts that may be coming from a training program or a training platform like Training Peaks or something like that, as well as the daily suggested workouts. Those are all showing in one spot and they're also sorted by sport type. It's just a really handy place to get to that, especially if you're doing a lot of structured training from a training plan. The next item added is the new gaming profile. Uh, this is for eSports, like computer sports, uh, not so much like Zwifting type sports, but you can actually use it for Zwifting. It works the same way there. Uh, and it allows you to do data overlays from the watch to third-party apps uh, that can go ahead and basically overlay like your heart rate and stress data and stuff like that. There's also some other features in here that I haven't had a chance to play with yet that I did not see in the past. Garmin actually had this from a number of years ago on the Garmin Instinct Esports Edition back in October of 2020, so almost three years ago. Uh, so now we're seeing like a resurgence here. My guess is Garmin's got something up their sleeve there. Usually when they add it across a bunch of watches at the same time without any explanation, something else is going on. We just don't know what that something else is quite yet. And lastly on the new features front is the ability to have a multi-location weather data in the weather widget. Uh, so we talked about the weather widget overlays earlier on, but now you can go and add location. You can add multiple locations to track the weather. So if you have your home location and maybe you want to track a friend or family somewhere else, whatever the case is, uh, you can do that from the weather widget on the watch itself. Uh, so with that, there you go, a complete look at all of the new features on the new beta. Uh, give it a world. Again, keep in mind it's beta. Do not download it on a watch before you go do your big race or whatever the heck it is out there uh, because things may go wrong. As we saw with the 955, the Connect IQ uh, widgets and stuff like that don't work at all on that beta. Uh, that was something that wasn't on the release notes. So again, just keep in mind beta means beta. Things could break. With that, if you found this interesting and useful, as I said earlier, whack that like button or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.